My dad's name is Juan. My mom's name is Ha. They're, both of them are the second eldest, uh, I mean second youngest in their family. My mom comes from a family of four children. My dad comes from a family of seven children. They were born in Vietnam during the war and grew up in the aftermath of that war. When they were growing up, they didn't have very much. The clothes were usually inherited after the elder one, and the, the bed was usually shared between many people, or you could also sleep on the ground with only a bamboo mat to separate you from cold, hard ground. Uh, my dad sometimes had to go through the trash bins of wealthier families to look for the coal that wasn't completely burnt, that was still good enough so they could reuse it at home. My mom sometimes always had a bowl of rice and fish sauce to eat for the dinner. So when I was born, my dad didn't want me to go through what he did. He just refused to do that. And my mom did also. So they have taken a leap of faith and they have decided to try their luck somewhere else. So that's how I got to Czech Republic. The times here in Czech Republic at the beginning weren't much better. My mom and dad were pushing a cart in this at this market. I would be selling Vietnamese street food. So they usually stayed up until 1 a.m. in the morning and woke up at 5 a.m. just so they could prepare the food for a day. And they would push it to this market, spend their countless hours there. And even if it would be raining or snowing, they would stand outside and, and they would try to sell as much as possible so they could provide for our family. I, because of that, usually stayed overnight at kindergarten because my parents were too busy and couldn't spend time with me because they were too busy providing for our family. <laughs> I remember this one time. Uh, there uh, used to grow a wild herb slash plants behind the Mozart that we used to live in. I, I don't know how it's called in Czech or English, but in Vietnam we call it Zomui. So basically this wild herb and, or plant was growing behind it. And my mom would occasionally come out with a basket and pick, pick the herb. Then she would bring it home, she would cook it, and we would eat it. And because I considered myself to be a bright, smart, four-year-old kid, I immediately connected all the dots that were there. And the next day I went to school, I went to kindergarten. And I, and I wanted to brag, I, I wanted to be cool for, for once. So I spread throughout the whole kindergarten that in our family, we eat grass. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen the faces of all the kids in the kindergarten and the faces of all the teachers. Uh, it was hilarious. Anyway, let me tell you the first time I've defeated myself. When I was younger, uh, I was bullied. It wasn't physical, it was emotional. I was the only kid, I was the only Asian kid at the school, so I was an easy target to pick. And if 10 people from the class are telling you that you're Asian, you're, they're mocking you, they're calling you names, you feel inferior, you feel that you, you are not as good as them, and sometimes God to me, I would run home and I would cry. The other times, I wouldn't want to leave the house, I didn't want to go to school because I knew what was expecting me there. I knew what was going to happen. And this one time, I was pretending I'm sick. My mom got into my room and asked me, do you want to take care of us when you, when you get old, when you will not be able to provide for ourselves? Will you take care of us? And I said, yes, of course. I will take care of you. Don't worry about that. She, and then she explained to me, she said, well, you want to take care of us, but how are you going to take care of us if you don't have a successful job? If you want to have a successful job, you need to study a lot, you need to learn a lot. And how are you going to study a lot if you are not at school? And then I broke down and I told her about the bullying. And she, and she told me, ignore them, persist, go through that. 
So the next day, I went to school. I was dedicated. I was dedicated that they wouldn't get to me. Even if they would be calling me the meanest names, they would not get to me. It didn't work. It didn't work at first. At the first name that they called me, I would break down and run home. But the next day, I've dedicated myself again. And I've dedicated to defeat myself. So I went to school, and I focused only on the blackboard in front of me. I was only studying. And eventually, with the time, I've noticed that I got better at it. They were so good at ignoring them that they couldn't get to me. That even if they were mocking my parents for being Asian, even if they would be mocking my parents that they're only some, someone who works in a convenience store, they could not get to me. And that's the first time they have reached my goal. I have reached my goal of them, no, not letting them get to me. And I believe that I've reached that goal by defeating myself, my inner self. I believe that in order to defeat yourself, you need to have key things, three key things. Firstly, you need to have vision. Imagine it. See it in front of you. Draw all the details that you have for that situation, as many details as you can. Draw them all out. Make it vivid. Make it as if it's going to happen tomorrow, even though it might be happening in the next 10 years. It might be not be happening in 10 years, but make it vivid. My parents had a vision. Their vision was that their son would not struggle, that they wouldn't have to go through what they did. My vision was that I would provide for my family, that I would be able to provide for my mom when she get old. And that. The second thing, that you have to be persistent. Uh, when I was about 16, my mom and dad usually spent 16 hours a day at shop. They would be working throughout the weekends, they would be working throughout all the holidays. And when I got turned 16, I started helping them in the shop. And this one time, the, this 20-something-year-old guy came to our shop, he picked a bottle, and he started to leave. And we saw that, so my dad confronted him. And he, told, and he started yelling at us. He told us that this is his own country, that we do not belong here, that we are some immigrants, and we are something lower than him. And he started being aggressive. And he told us that if we don't like it, we can F off back to our own country. And then he pushed my dad. He, he sent him flying, and my, and my dad fell. I was there. I, was, I stood there, and I was frozen. I was shocked. And after that, they, he also tipped a couple of shelves down. And when he left, I told my parents, that's it. We are quitting. We are not doing this anymore. Uh, I don't want you to go through this anymore. And my parents said no. I, I asked them if, if it happens a lot. And they said, yeah, it happens. And they persisted. They stood there, they took all the harassments from the customers or from the bureaus. They've been standing in cold, in snow, in rain, because they knew that they have to persist. They knew that they have to persist, otherwise their vision wouldn't come true. The third thing you need to have is the person. When my mom was still pushing the cart at this market and selling food, I was about six years old at the time, and there was this manager who liked to, let's say, bully people around. He liked to make life Asian people difficult. I don't know why, but it seems like every time he just went an extra mile to make our life difficult. So this one time I was there with my mom, and she was pushing a cart, and suddenly I hear someone yelling. So I turn around at him, and I see him, how he's yelling at my mom. My mom doesn't understand Czech, so she doesn't know what he's yelling at her. She doesn't understand, but she's standing there. She's quite small, so she's standing there. She's shaking, and, and he proceeds to rip the cart from her hands and tips it over. It, it was early in the morning, so we had all our food and basically all the money for a day, all the profit we had in that cart, and he tipped it over. I still remember to this day that my mom just got down and he started picking the stuff while he was standing up, like, up on her, and she was like on her knees, picking it up. So I've decided that I'm going to take action. I was six year old, so the next time uh, I got to the market, when I went to the market with my mom, I went there and I saw the manager, so I ran to him. I told him, 
Hello, how are you? I was extremely polite. I bowed to him. I even pulled out a napkin and wiped his shoes because I saw it in the movie and I thought that, that was right. So then I ran back to my mom and I told her, I think everything about what I did. I was like, Mom, don't worry. He's going to trip your car anymore because I have taken care of it. I have wiped his shoes. And my mom started crying. And I didn't understand it because for me, I should have made her happy. Why is she crying? It was only years later that she told me that it was, she was crying because she felt useless, that she was supposed to take care of me. But instead, I was the one wiping shoes from someone so she wouldn't get in trouble. And she felt that that's not right. And she says that that incident made her to work three times harder every day. So simply put, if you want to succeed, if you want to conquer your goal, you need to challenge yourself every day. You are your biggest opponent, so you have to challenge yourself. But also, you have to defeat yourself. That's how you're going to reach your goal. That's how you're going to grow. And in order to defeat yourself, you need, I believe, to have three things. Vision, persistence, and the person that you are doing it for. My parents always say that success is like a meal that is well cooked. It's like cooking a good meal. Because if you're cooking a good meal, you need to have vision. You need to know what you want to cook. Is it a steak? Is it pasta? You need to know what you want to cook. Secondly, you need to be persistent. Again, I believe that no one here has managed to cook a good meal on the first try. So you have to try again, again, and again. You have to practice. You have to practice 100 times until one day you, I believe that you will be able to cook that meal. And thirdly, the best meal is the meal shared. So you have to have that one special person that you'll cook for. This is my friends today. I'm very glad to say that they are happy, that they have, what, through whatever they have gone through, they have persisted, uh, they don't have to worry anymore. They are running multiple businesses and they're running them successfully, even though they only have and finished an elementary education. They have uh, had to swallow all, all the insults from all the other people. They have defeated themselves multiple times over the years. They have defeated all the odds that were stacked against them. And I believe they were successful. I believe that they have fulfilled their goal. They have fulfilled their vision. Because today, I'm standing here in front of you. And I'm not going through some trash bins. I don't have to sleep on a bamboo mat on the floor. And for that, thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dad.